Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you what's the difference between a SIS processor and a RISC processor. Okay, ARM7 is a RISC processor. ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machines. I would advise, before you learn ARM in detail, before you start learning its various operating modes, etc, etc, instruction set, first watch this video. This will make you understand the whole school of thought on which ARM is based. RISC processors are very different from SIS processors. If this is the first RISC processor you are learning, please watch this video before you start learning ARM. Okay? Now, uh, if I have to jot down a differentiation, this is all SIS points, this is points of RISC processor. There are so many points. But if you ask me like a friend, sir, just give me one point of difference. The first point is that main point. In SIS processors, instructions are of variable sizes. There could be in 8086, think of 8086, instructions could be 1 by 2 by 3 by 4 by 5 by 6 by. In 8051, instructions can be 1 by 2 by 3 by. In a RISC processor, all instructions are one size. That's it. In ARM7, all instructions are 32 bit. Simple. If you're learning PIC, PIC is also a RISC processor, PIC is also fabulous to learn. All instructions except for four in the whole instruction set are 16 bit instructions. So, this is the first outstanding characteristic of a RISC processor. All instructions are of one size. Now, this immediately gives you the idea it is rigid. Yes, it is rigid. But with this rigidness comes performance, a bag full of performance. Because all instructions are of the same size, they will end that to 32 bits, which is exactly the size of the data bus. This guarantees that every instruction will require exactly one cycle for fetching. That doesn't hold true in a SIS processor. Bigger the instruction, more the time it requires for fetching. Please tell me you understand that. 8051 has an 8-bit data bus. If you have a 1-byte instruction or a 2-byte instruction or a 3-byte instruction, obviously they will not take the same time to fetch. Bigger the instruction, more the cycles required for fetching. Same goes with 8086. There was a bouquet of sizes, 1-byte all the way up to 6 bytes. There will be so much time spent on just fetching instructions. Here, all instructions are fetched in one cycle. So that's your next point. Multiple fetch cycles, different instructions, different fetch timings. Here one cycle for fetching no matter what is the instruction to be fetched in one cycle you would understand why i'm stressing so much on this point very soon you'll understand the whole jigsaw will fit right now i'm just teaching you the pieces individually in a sys processor another characteristic feature of a sys processor sys processor allows operations on both registers also memory also so what does that mean add a comma r0 in 8051 and add a comma at the rate r0 in the first one, you're adding the value of a register. In the second one, you're getting the data from memory. Even in 8086, add BL comma CL, add BL comma square bracket 2000. I'm giving you examples of different processors because you may have come from any processor into ARM. You can't start learning <laughs> this subject with ARM. I mean, you have to be a genius if you understand ARM before learning any other processor. Anyway, it's too advanced. It's a processor of this generation. So you have to first know some basic processor. Now, so sys processors, CISC allow operations with registers also and memory also. That means they are flexible. RISC processors allow operations only on registers. In ARM, the only thing allowed on memory is a load and a store. Everything else is on register. So what is the advantage? All instructions will require one execution cycle. Hear me. All instructions will have one execution cycle because you are working on registers. If you work on memory, instruction will take more time because first you have to get the data then add the data but if you're working on registers registers are present inside the processor obviously will have it will be faster it will have a cascading effect not just that being registers it is faster it will have a cascading effect and a double effect when you think of pipelining now what is pipelining one instruction is being executed another one is being decoded i don't care about the decoding another one is being fetched so hear me now think and listen okay shut down from the remaining world you understand this point you'll understand a lot of points in arm this point that i'm saying in pipelining one instruction is being executed the other is being fetched where do you fetch the instruction from memory where do you do execution inside the processor here is the point as long as execution is happening inside the processor you can fetch another instruction from the memory 
But if you allow execution also to happen on memory, if you allow working on memory operands, do you understand execution wants to use the memory? If execution wants to use the memory, at that time fetching cannot take place. Did you understand the point I'm talking about? If execution says I want data from so and so location, the buses will be used to get that data. Then how can you do fetching at that time? So far, if you've learned 8086, you've always been saying one unit is execution. EU is executing the instruction, BI is fetching the next instruction. Please let me just burst the bubble. That is true. That is not true. I'm sorry. That is not true. That is only true as long as you work on registers. If you allow operations on memory, first of all, memory operations are slower than register, register operations. They themselves are slow. Moreover, they kill pipelining because if your operation is going to happen on memory, at that time you cannot simultaneously fetch the next instruction. Then fetching will have to be put on hold so that this execution gets over. So what's the point of having a pipeline processor if your pipeline is going to keep failing all the time? If you enforce that every execution happens only on registers, you don't have to go to the memory at all. Execution will purely happen inside the processor and side by side fetching can take place. Tell me, did you understand this point? Do you understand how ARM being pipelined is better than 8086 also being pipelined? That was also pipeline, this is also pipeline, but this is true pipelining. Execution will never interfere with fetching because execution doesn't happen on memory, execution happens on registers. Are you now understanding the point? ARM works totally from within itself, it hardly ever goes to memory. There are only two instructions that take you to the memory, a load and a store. Everything else is done inside the processor. Are you clear? This point will be very important understanding many more things. Now, with this point, you understand all the points. So, in a sys processor, you work on what? Registers also, memory also. That means you'll need addressing modes to work on registers as well as on memory for every instruction. So that means you'll require lots of addressing modes. You'll need few addressing modes. Now, since you work on registers and memory, that means you have dependence on memory. So, you don't need too many registers. Even a handful of registers are fine because you're supporting memory operations. Since ARM does all operations on registers, it is obvious it will need lots of registers. So another characteristic of a RISC processor, RISC processors are loaded with registers. If you're learning PIC, PIC has 4,000, PIC 18, I'm talking about PIC 18, has 4,096 registers. You understand my point? Works only on registers. It doesn't need to go outside at all. Anyway, anyway ARM also has 37 registers, which is still way more than 80864 registers. So works on registers, works on very few registers, means lots of registers. Now, since you need to work with register also, memory also, you will have an add with register, an add with memory, a subtract with register, subtract with memory, add with carry with register, add with carry with memory. What are you understanding? You will have too many instructions. So your instruction set will become large. If you only allow add with register, subtract with register, add with carry with register, nothing with memory, only load and store with memory, everything else only on registers, your instruction set will automatically become so small. That's how it gets the name reduced instruction set. People think reduced means there will be add, there will not be subtract, there will be increment, there will not be decrement. How stupid. Is this how you reduce an instruction set? This is not the meaning of reduce. Reduce means you'll have one form of every instruction. You won't have 10 forms of the same instruction. Tell me, did you understand this? Because you're restricting operations to be based on registers. So you have a reduced instruction set, you have a large instruction set, also means you have a complex instruction set, you'll have a simple instruction set because everything works on registers. Decoding. Now, as your instructions become complex, the opcode will become bigger and more and more complicated. You understand opcode, you understand what's the meaning of opcode, right? There will be a different opcode for add with a register, there will be different opcode for add with a memory, Subtract with a register, subtract with a memory. So as your instructions increase, your opcodes increase. As your opcodes increase, they become larger and they become more complex. As the opcodes become more complex, what are the steps? First, an instruction has to be fetched. Then it has to be decoded. What do you mean by decoding? Analyzing the opcode. If the opcode becomes more and more complex, decoding will become complicated. Complicated means it will become slower. So it has complex and slow decoding. Here, the instructions are simple. So decoding is not only simple, it's also faster. They use hardwired control units. These use microprogram control units. I'm just throwing in some extra points. And that's what makes it even slower. But, slower. So it requires multiple execution cycles. Mul add with a register will work faster than add with a memory. So if I tell you I'm doing add, I cannot tell you how much time it will take. It depends upon whether you're working with register or with memory. Operations are only supported on registers. All arithmetic logic operations only work on registers. So I know if you're doing add, it will require one cycle. If you're doing subtract, it will require one cycle. There will be no memory operation. So what can I say? All instructions will be executed in one cycle. Students say, 
sir is repeating the same point again no my dear student i am not repeating the same point again here i was telling fetching fetching will require one cycle here and here fetching will require multiple cycles here i am talking about execution execution will also require one cycle execution will require multiple cycles decoding will require one cycle decoding will require multiple cycles so you will understand these three points right now when i do this look here normal processor fetch decode execute fetch decode execute fetch decode execute pipeline processor a three stage pipeline processor like arm fetch instruction while decoding it fetch the second while executing it decode the second fetch the third so this is execution of the first decoding of the second fetching of the third and this will go on look here we are saying we are doing working on three instructions at a time one is being executed next is being decoded next is being fetched this is only true as long as every instruction takes one cycle for fetching one cycle for decoding and one cycle for execution if instructions are going to take different cycles for fetching these two cannot go ahead because till the time you haven't fetched an instruction how can you decode the instruction till now fetching itself is not taking place if decoding takes extra time these two will get stuck up if execution takes extra time these two will get stuck up you understand there are three people moving in a chain even if one of them slows down it affects the others are you clear you want perfect pipeline if you want perfect pipelining you have to streamline the operations and decide everything should require only one cycle this is not true for a sys processor in a sys processor instructions will take different time for fetching will take different time for execution because you allow memory operands will take different types for decoding because you allow complex opcodes and complex instructions so sys processors even though they are pipeline they never really give you picture perfect pipelining there are always empty spots in the graph those empty spots are called pipeline bubbles that never happens in a risc processor so being a three stage pipeline it gives you a performance much better than six stage six sys pipelines so because that so all this rigidness that you have to work only on registers all instructions will be of one size all operations will be on on one size this rigidness is what gives arm the kind of performance that it gets and that's how they are probably the most sold microcontrollers in the world everybody uses arm processors today because of their characteristic they came in much later after intel intel started everything way back in 70s that and it soon became market leader intel is in a different league of itself but it is useful that concept is useful of sys processors in microprocessors in microcontrollers you don't want flexibility what you want is performance a remote control doesn't care about flexibility but it wants good performance at very low cost the selling price of a remote control is 100 rupees in that it has to give you good performance so for that what you need is a very rigid kind of architecture that's what arm has any any so it gives you very poor pipelining because of the pipelining bubbles that i explained it gives you excellent picture perfect pipelining everything will require exactly only one cycle no pipelining bubbles so the philosophy of a sys processor is to be flexible but definitely slower flexibility brings in slowness philosophy of risc processor is be rigid so that you are fast okay sys flexibility is useful in general purpose applications which is what a computer does computers have microprocessors inside so computers which have microprocessors since they are microprocessors they are based on sys model microcontrollers are not used in computers they are used in appliances like a mouse a mouse doesn't have to run every program in the world a mouse just has to take the x y coordinates and the button that is pressed because the programs are so limited you don't want flexibility what you want is performance over there over there you need a risc kind of processor and over there you need microcontrollers so microcontrollers are used in appliances they are risc based microprocessors are used in computers they are sys based i think i have given you enough points honestly i can give you equal number of points more and probably again one more there so many points of difference but i try to give up give you the most important points of differentiation between a risc and a sys processor i hope you got the idea of a risc processor all the best to you